Everything which is new has difficulties. Any innovation will have obstacles because of the existing interest. I mean, innovations are disruptive. If you're on the side of the change, you have to fight. And I always say winners never quit, and quitters never win. So you have to just stuck to it. And if it just takes twice as long, you know, you just never give up. My name is uh, Wilbo Ockels, uh, best known in the Netherlands as the first Dutch astronaut, professor at the Technical University of Delft. And uh, I'm standing aside Superbus, a new type of uh, public transport, which uh, I initiated because I was not happy with the existing public transport. And then I thought, what would be the ideal public transport? And I, I just checked it off for myself. I just said, okay, it needs to be fast, it needs to be sustainable, and it needs to be good looking, it needs to be sexy, it needs to be powerful. All the things which you normally want from a normal car. The way it's operated is that you, um, you, you give your idea, your desire to the system, so it's on demand. It's not something which has a, a, a fixed uh, service. Uh, you say, okay, I want to go tomorrow from this place, Katwijk, to Zwolle in the Netherlands at 8 o'clock. And then I get offers from various vehicles. One vehicle will say, okay, half past eight, I can bring you, and the other one will say, quarter to eight. And you get a grouping of those people which roughly want to go at the same time to the same location. And with 20 passengers, you can do that. And then what happens is that this vehicle can use all the normal roads. It's like a, a normal bus on a normal road. It can go roundabouts, it can go to villages. It picks you up, and then it picks other people up. And then the vehicle goes and drives towards the highway. At the highway, you have entrance into what we call the super track, which is a lane in the middle of the highway where you can go high speed, which is separated 250. And then when you get close to the delivery point where the passengers want to be, you can switch to the normal roads. You can use a normal highway, you can use the normal secondary roads, you can go to the villages, whatever, and then you deliver the people. It's like a mode, modus which is between the normal car and the normal public transport, the train which we, which we know. If you drive in this vehicle, it's some kind of a combination between feeling like a pilot in a jet fighter, uh, a driver in a sports car, and having a train because of the smoothness. It drives in fact very, very easy, and because of the small steering wheel and because of the rear wheel steering, you don't feel like you have such a long car. It, it drives basically like, almost like a normal car. So you have here uh, compartments uh, where normally can seat uh, six people. It has a luxury appeal. Many people then ask, yes, but is that not very expensive? And the funny thing is that road vehicle is less expensive than trains. And you can drive this vehicle for the cost of a train. And we, we've shown that. The original idea of Superbus uh, was in the beginning of 2004. And uh, I became professor at the University of Delft. And uh, it was one of my first things to do, to realize. Uh, I got uh, working together with uh, one of my former students, Joris Melkert, who is very knowledgeable about aerospace technology. And uh, I got Antonia Terzi, very knowledgeable about design and vehicles and high-speed vehicles. And the first thing which we did is we involved many other professors and many other fields of expertise. We got combined a really powerful group to get the concept basically laid out and to understand what's important, what's less important, and how the realization track could go. And since then, we developed further and further. We got money from the government. We got more industries involved, and it became more and more, let's say, a professional development. While still, there were lots of students involved. The project inside the TU Delft has now basically matured, and at the moment, it's a real product and uh, it has to go now to the market. Uh, so the next plan after where we are now is uh, to drive more, to drive at high speeds, to drive in Germany, to drive in France, and, and just show it to the people. Because at the end, the customer is, is the people. It's uh, the passengers, the, the people who use this as public transport. There's something really to be proud of. Uh, Superbus is accepted on the normal road as a normal vehicle. And, and we got the minister to uh, give us the, uh, the plate. The license plate is very simple. It means you can go in Superbus and drive on the road. <laughs> it's just, just what it is. It's the freedom. It's the freedom to just use the Dutch road system. 
the fact that you go from A to B with a vehicle which has very low aerodynamic drag is of course saving energy. The fact that you have a vehicle which is very lightweight is also reducing the, the resistance and therefore you save energy. But it is not only about saving. Sustainability means that you protect the future that you make sure that something in the future is at least as good as it is now. So you cannot use resources which you cannot replace, like oil. So it should be electric and you should make electricity by using the sun. But uh, of course there's more to it, because I think there's something very fundamental. Sustainability is not less, it is different and more fun. You want the future to be attractive. You want a future for your children and your grandchildren, which is better than we have today. And so this vehicle is luxury, yes, but that's okay. I mean, we don't need to reduce. And so the sustainability is also part of the fact that this is a vehicle which is really okay, which is something you would like your children to drive in and your grandchildren to drive in. That's also sustainability. Public transport with Superbus is beyond, and that's the key issue. I mean, you've seen the logo of Superbus as an S, and the B has become a heart. It is, it is not only practical, it's emotional, it is something which you feel is okay. That is what we want. We have a certain development program in, in mind. You, you, you know, with, with a public transport, a new public transport, you cannot go and say, hey, here it is, and, and I start. Because next to the idea, the concept, and the studies, you need the actual government to install the road. And that's, that's let's say, a big hurdle. If I look at the past, it goes about twice as slow as I would like to. And, uh, and I think that is part of the deal when you do something to totally innovative and new. My vision is that this thing is, uh, is on the road you know, within five years.